This is Film Masters. On this episode, we're going to be playing around with the new Doctor Strange's portal effect. So first of all, down below in the description area is a downloadable pack. In that pack contains two videos. The two videos are the startup and the end of the Doctor Strange's portal effect. I'm going to show you how you can apply it and composite it into your own videos. So let's get into the tutorial. Now, as you can see, I already have the effects in the project window. Now let's have a look at those. So first of all, we've got Doctor Strange effect startup. Now I'm just going to come down here. I'm just going to toggle the pixel aspect ratio so that it is the correct format for viewing. Now you don't need to do this when we're putting it on the timeline, but this is just so I can show you what the effects look like. So with the startup, obviously you've got the nice startup and it continuously plays for 30 seconds. So you've got a 30 second clip with the startup and it's spinning. Now obviously you won't use 30 seconds or possibly you may, but generally if you're doing a scene, you wouldn't be sitting there for 30 seconds with the portal playing in the background. Now, what else do you get in the download pack? You also get the end part. Now the end effect. So let's have a look at that. So it runs for 30 seconds also, as you can see. And when I drag it through, you'll see it changes. So if you want different looks of the effect and you've got that, if we go down to the very end, you'll see that it actually starts to disappear. And that means that if you're wanting to do the portal effect and making it look like it's disappearing or ending, and then you've got that option as well. So now we've done that, we're going to go straight through and we're going to do a bit of a tutorial showing you how to use this effect on your own video. So first of all, I'm just going to grab the clip and I'm just going to drop it down here into the composition window. And as you can see, I've got a, a nice image of a train station. It's actually a overpass in a train station. And if we slide down, you can see I walk into frame. So what we'll do is we'll use the very beginning of this frame up to say uh, about here. And I'm just going to press N on my keyboard so that I can reduce my workspace. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to go back to the very beginning. And let's start with the Doctor Strange effect startup. I'm just going to drop that above the clip. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to toggle and switches and change the transfer mode to screen. Now, it's just about putting it wherever I would like to put it in the project window. I'm going to bring it down to uh, close to the end, very much like the opening trailer. So I'm going to press S for scale. I'm just going to scale that down and I'm going to move it into position. Now I might make that a little bit larger. Now what I want to do as well is instead of having it starting up, I'm going to drag the effect on the timeline. So it's already spinning. As you can see, you've got the nice spark looking effect coming off the wheel as it's spinning very much like the trailer that you've seen for the Doctor Strange teaser trailer. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hide it, the effect for a second. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing. What you can see here is we've obviously got a rail and we've also got a wall. Now you can also see there's a little bit of a gap in the rail. So we're going to make sure that we put a mask around the layer and hide some of the portal behind it. So it looks like it's in the scene. So let's do that. Let's grab the bottom layer. I'm going to duplicate that. So control D, I'm going to put it above the effect. Now I'm going to hide the effect on the timeline, but still making sure that my top video is selected. And I'm going to go up to the mask tool now, and I'm going to mask down the wall, down the railing, up to this section here. So I'm just going to go straight around. And after I've done that, I'm just going to turn the effect on so we can see what we've done. And I'll hide the mask with this little toggle mask button here. So we can see that looks all right. Now I just want to hide this little center part. So I'm just going to zoom in. 
you can see some of the effect goes actually that's not straight let's just turn the mask tool back on see where i've missed part of the uh arm rails i'm just gonna make that adjustment and it looks like all the way down here also Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this little part out here, which is uh, part of the railing, as you can see. So I'm just going to go up to mask again and making sure that top video layer is selected. It's going to go through and put a mask in. Now, nothing has changed here. So I'm just going to press M on my keyboard and you'll see the two masks layers have come up. So we've got add and we're just going to drop this one to subtract. Now, if you want to put a slight blur on there, we can do that. So we'll do that now. I'm just going to press F and that changes to mask feather. And I'm just going to make that about nine. Perfect. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to hit the hard enter on the keyboard and just do a RAM preview to see what we've got. So, so far we've got the effect spinning around. However, we need to uh, do a few other things to this effect before it's finished. So first of all, let's cut the bottom of it out. So I'm gonna select the effect now. I'm just gonna go up to the mask tool and I'm just going to trim. around the floor area. And I'm just gonna press M on this layer to bring up the mask settings and subtract it. And I'm gonna press F for feather and I'm gonna adjust the feathering now and bring that up to around 50, I think. So let's change that to 50. And let's see what that looks like. So it looks like it's spinning now through the floor, giving that portal effect look so next thing I'm going to do is we're going to do a glow on the ground and we're, we're also going to give it a bit of a Gaussian blur so it looks like the light is spilling off the effect so let's do that now so first of all let's select this layer I'm just going to turn the mask off so we don't have to look at it and control D to duplicate the layer and so I'm just going to hit enter on the layer, I'm gonna call this blur. So the reason I called it blur is because it's going to be a blur and so I know what that actual layer is. So let's go up to effect now and let's go to, and I'm gonna select Gaussian blur and I'm gonna make that adjustment 133. So once I've made that nice little blur look, I'm going to just, select that layer and duplicate it once more. So the blur layer is gonna be duplicated. So control D and it gives you that nice, rich blur light spill. Now I could press T and just make slight adjustments to that to bring down some of the brightness until I'm happy with it. So I'm gonna make that around 47. Now obviously you'll be using your own video so depending on your lighting, I filmed at nighttime, so you can adjust the blur to give whatever light spill that you want in the effect. Now, if you do it in daytime, you're probably gonna have to bump up the opacity a bit, so therefore that you can see the light spill more. Uh, however, because I've done this at nighttime, the effect looks a lot better. So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go down to the original layer. So I've got the original Doctor Strange effect. I'm gonna duplicate that. And I'm going to go down to toggle switches again. I'm gonna make this a 3D layer. What I'm gonna do, I want it to have it lay down on the floor. So I'm going to go up to the rotation tool and I'm just gonna rotate the X axis and the Z so I can just get the right positioning I'm 
just going to drop it down so that it sits nicely on the ground. So next thing, I'm going to go up to the effect, blur and sharpen, and go again to Gaussian blur. And I'm going to adjust it to 300. So we've got that nice glow on the ground. So if I hit hard enter on my keyboard and do a RAM preview. Now one of our master subbies had a question in the trailer that I put up for the Doctor Strange effect. So a writer 56107 wants to know, can you actually put a different location inside the portal? Well, yes, you can. So let's, let's do that now. It's just a matter of selecting a different video background. So something else that I filmed, I'm going to double select the video file and bring that up in the footage window. And you can see me setting up a frame ready to show how the effects used in the teaser trailer. So I'm going to use some of this video and uh, we'll put that behind the portal to show that it's a different or well, you can put a different world behind the portal. So let's have a look. Here I am with my hoodie on. And so we'll start off when I'd start to walk. So just here, I'm going to come up here now. I'm going to use the set in point. And once I've got that, that is now clipped. So if I grab the video file and put it on the timeline, you can see it's clipped the video from the actual start point. So that's one way of doing a basic edit in After Effects and getting it ready. Now, one thing you can see, it's now currently sitting on top of some of the footage in the project window. So we need to set this up correctly. So first of all, let's drag it all the way down to the very bottom so you can't see it. And what we need to do is select the layer above it and we're going to use a mask to cut out a hole in the center. So one option is to come up here and use the Eclipse tool and drag that over and try and get it as central as possible. Now I've used the Move tool as well just to center it. And I'm going to go and subtract it like so and press F to feather it to say around about, let's say 30. So we put in 30 there. You can see that we've got a different background in there. We've got to do some adjustments though. So let's select the layer. So I've got the move tool selected. And what I'll do is I'm going to go in there and select, select the actual mask and make some finer adjustments. So I'm moving the mask so it's in the white area of the effect. Now if I want to add another point, it's just a matter of going up to the mask tool or the mask pen and finding a location when you see a little plus appear, selecting it and it'll put another mask point in there. And then it's just a matter of pressing the V on your keyboard to bring up the move tool again and then you can move that point around like so. So the next thing I'm going to do is going to select the video that we originally put in there. And I'm going to press S to scale it down. So I'm going to scale it down and then I'll select it and just simply move it across. And I'll put it into around about here. So one way is you could have the portal actually appear. So have it small and then scale up bringing with the mask, having it as a motion mask and bringing in another world or another video clip into the frame. So if I have a RAM preview and have a look at that, we should have something that looks like this. So as you can see, I'm coming in from a different dimension or a different world or a different location, whatever you're wanting to do with this effect, you can set it up that way. 
Obviously, you can animate the effect itself too to slide forward and backward. You can do that as well. So I'm just going to hide the background and I'm going to delete the mask. And the last thing I want to do with this effect, I'm just going to select the original Doctor Strange effect again and duplicate that. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit. And I'm going to press T for transparency and drop that down to around 30%. And I'm just going to move that over. And that's because I've got glass behind the actual frame and I'm wanting to show a bit of a reflection. So when we're finished applying the effect in this tutorial, I've showed you how to put it into a composition. I've showed you how to put it behind particular elements. Now the next thing I want to do is show you how I animated the effect to make it look like it was coming towards the camera. Okay, so to do that, it's pretty simple. I've just got the uh, other clip open as the background. Obviously, like I was saying earlier, you'll have your own video. So I'm going to go up to Layer, New, and I'm going to go to Null Object. Now, this is what we'll be using for our control. It's just a matter of selecting all of our elements that we've put together using the Pick Whip and joining them up to the Null Object. and animating the null object. So let's first of all select the null object and we're going to move the null object around and place the effect where we would like it. I'm going to press S to scale, adjust the size of it. So probably start off just about there. And I'm just going to press the stopwatch so I can keyframe animate the actual effect forward. So I'm going to move the slider to about here. I'm going to press N just to cut off the work area. And I'm just going to adjust the size of the effect. So let's have a look to see what that looks like. So I'm just going to do a RAM preview now. So I'm just doing a RAM preview. Now one thing I want you to notice is around the effect you'll see a light white, what appears to be a light appearing. Now some of that is to do with the fact that the size of the effect that I've done and the way that I've rendered it out to be as small as possible has caused some type of macro blocking. So to fix that, um, it's going to be in some of the uh, parts of the effect itself, unfortunately. Um, I have tried to remove it, but the problem with it is because I've saved it out as a, a H.264 file, and the way that that file compresses the effect, it does put a little bit of the macro blocking into the actual video itself. Now to fix that, you've got two options. One, go into the video, you've got 30 seconds on each side of it and find where those elements aren't showing up and just simply clip them out and remove them completely. Or the other option is by selecting each one of the layers, go up to effect, go up to color correction and brightness and contrast, make the value negative one for brightness and contrast, make that five, then copy, so control C, copy the brightness and contrast effect and apply it, so control V onto each layer. And as you can see, it's now disappeared. So that's how you get rid of it. Now, the only way I could have done that, I could have made it as a uncompressed video file. And by doing that, you would have had a video file that would have been a gigabyte or two gigabytes to download. But to keep the file size as small, I've had to make it as H.264, but there is a workaround. So make sure that you do that if you notice that appear. Now you probably won't notice it if your background is brighter because it won't show up. However, because I've got a black, dark, background it shows up in the video itself so there is a workaround around it um, it was a bit of a mixture of either use a uncompressed file 
and give you the highest quality possible or use a compressed file with the best quality possible with the smallest and the least amount of time to download another thing with an effect if we made it a lot higher and made it higher res then that file itself would also be a lot harder to work with your effects because of the fact that you've also got a file that is CPU intense and memory intense on your timeline. So you can see it's now disappeared and now we've got the nice effect going. Now, same thing here. I've got the front of my car in the effect and you can see some of the spill hitting the bonnet of the car. Same thing before we can go and select the video, duplicate it, move it all the way up at the very top of the project timeline. And what I'll do is just simply use a mask now and just go around the bonnet and mask it out, hide the mask, and your end product should look like this. So that's how you can animate the effect so it moves towards the camera. So that is how you animate the Doctor Strange portal forward to the camera. And that is how we apply the new Doctor Strange's portal effect into the timeline. Now you can use it in Adobe's After Effects CS6 or CC or any other program that can composite the actual video. So it doesn't have to be that, but you can download it, use it to your heart's content. Make sure you give a like to the video if you like the effect itself. Comment below in the comment section if you have anything else you'd like me to start working on or any other tutorials or if you just want to say hello and I'll say hello back to you. Now if you want to become a film master subby, it's pretty simple. You have to do subscribe to the channel, like us on Facebook and or on Twitter. And until next time, don't just film it, master it.